The Broadcasting Minister is adamant that RNZ National will remain commercial free under any new media setup with TVNZ. Chris Fa'afoy today confirmed that work will begin on a business case for creating a new supersized public broadcaster, as reported by RNZ last month. Cabinet has approved a business case to look at the viability of creating a new public media entity as an independent multi, multiple platform multimedia operation. The new entity would receive a mixture of both government funding and advertising. I spoke to Chris Fa'afoy a short time ago and asked him whether this is the end of RNZ and TVNZ as we know it. No, it's not, um, because that decision hasn't been made. And the decision that has been made is for uh, a detailed business case to be undertaken um, in order for us to uh, look at creating a new public uh, media entity, which we hope will be fit uh, for the future, um, because after some work, um, I think while RNZ and TVNZ uh, in their current forms have done great uh, work, um, the challenges on the horizon are difficult, as they are for all media companies. Uh, and we do think it needs, it needs to be changed. But before we make that decision, we've asked for that business case to be done. So what can RNZ and TVNZ be doing better? Look, it's, um, they, they, all, they all face challenges. They both face challenges. I think um, different platforms that have come on the scene, um, changing um, appetites from consumers, um, funding and advertising also um, are, are issues. And... Uh, the ability to create one entity, as is proposed, we think, uh, will allow them to meet some of those challenges, especially with the likes of um, different platforms and aligning a lot of the work um, that uh, a public broadcaster might do across those different platforms. Again, um, we've asked for that business case to come to us, for us to make uh, that decision. Um, I think in order to future-proof public media, which is extremely important given, I think, the state of media in general, uh, for um, the current generation and next generation of New Zealanders who want to continue uh, the types of New Zealand stories being told and people like me being held to account. So is this more about sharing resources, you know, HR? or How many newsrooms would you anticipate in this merger? Look, uh, the, the business case will look at that, but what I don't want to get into uh, is into what this means just for staff. It also means about what resources might be available for those people who want to work and the new entity to work across platforms. And I think that's what uh, we need to keep uh, at the top of mind. Uh, audiences in New Zealand are accessing and consuming their media in a much different way to when I was in the midst of that in the media 20 years ago and as they were um, five years ago. So making sure that the newsrooms within that, um, those who might make other types of content, have the ability to work across a number of platforms to tell those quintessentially New Zealand stories is extremely important. Uh, and we don't have that at the moment because we've got two entities um, that have been the traditional public media um, for some time now. Presumably you're talking about more online content. I guess, does that mean that RNZ and TVNZ's websites would merge? What does this look like? Look, um, I'm not going to get into operational matters or, um, you know, or, or decisions or um, musings about what it might look like because it's not uh, the purview of the Minister of Broadcasting. What we do want to have uh, is an entity um, that can work on platforms that exist now or that may um, exist in the future that don't exist right now uh, and be able to be nimble enough to change that. I think both RNZ and TVNZ, as I say, who have done great jobs of being traditional broadcasters, uh, we think um, uh, are not necessarily fit for purpose for the next 20, 25 years in order to be that nimble, uh, which is why we are proposing the new entity and asking for that business case to be done to prove to us that it can be done in a way that um, delivers public good through um, more public media mandate, but also um, that it can pay for itself. What aspects aren't fit for purpose, Minister? Look, I think if you uh, think of the ability of traditional broadcasters or traditional, traditional public media in New Zealand uh, to deal with um, platform challenges, we've got a hell of a lot more competition for sets of eyes and ears um, uh, available to New Zealanders now. Um, and, you know, whether um, RNZ or TVNZ have the capacity to compete with those, uh, those types of platforms to make sure that they are as accessible or offering the kind of New Zealand stories that they um, that we will want to see on on those platforms or similar platforms is a kind of challenge that they've got. Um, so, as I say, I think 
are not taking any away, anything away from what both RNZ and TVNZ have done uh, in the past and right up to now. But it's our job to make sure that they're fit for purpose for the future, uh, which is behind uh, the announcement today, to get that business case done to make sure that it is fit for purpose um, beyond our lifetimes. How much is this all going to cost? Look, that's what the business case will come back uh, and give us. Um, as we've said um, in the announcement, uh, there will be um, continue to be crown funding uh, and non-crown commercial funding. But, and I want to stress this very clearly, those platforms that are commercial free and non-commercial today will continue to be uh, commercial free and non-commercial uh, in the future. Um, I think that is extremely important because we want to make sure that New Zealanders understand that the entity will have a very strong public media mandate. How can you give that guarantee, Minister, given isn't that something the business case needs to decide, whether that's financially viable? Well, I'm giving that guarantee because that is something that, is, that the Cabinet Ministers, when I took this proposal to them, uh, fundamentally wanted it to be as part of the proposal. So, as I say, it will have a strong public media mandate. Uh, there will be um, a combination of uh, crown funding uh, and non-crown funding. Uh, we'll, the business case uh, will be able to flesh out some of the finer detail about that. But those platforms, like uh, Radio New Zealand uh, National, that are commercial free at the moment, will continue to be commercial free in the future. Does it make sense then, given all those constraints, for RNZ and TVNZ to combine some of our resources, be it HR or legal teams or newsrooms? Look, that will be part of the detailed business case. Um, but, you know, that, that is kind of administration, um, and sure that will be looked at. I am concerned about audiences and not administration. And in order for our public media entities uh, or public media in New Zealand to flourish, uh, it is our belief that action and change needs to come to strengthen public media for the future. What's the timeline on this, Minister? So we hope to have this um, uh, detailed business case back to us in six months. I don't think it'll take very long for us uh, to peruse that and make a decision. So I think that's the kind of time frame we're looking at. And are you supportive, uh, Minister, of the proposed changes to RNZ concert that have been announced this week? Oh, look, um, we met uh, with the um, Chief Executive and some board members of uh, Radio New Zealand last week and they um, outlaid their intention around the youth strategy. Um, as I said earlier today, um, we had a, a small number of concerns in amongst that and we said that we'd uh, get back to them about trying to mitigate uh, some of that. Um, I'm not going to get into the merits of uh, a youth strategy or concept FM. I know there's been... Um, a sizable amount of feedback about the move and the decision that Radio New Zealand has made. I want to make that very clear. Um, and there, as I say, there are a few issues that we said uh, we'd try and uh, look at because of concerns to mitigate some of those concerns that we outlined to um, the Radio New Zealand management and board last week. You have concerns with the proposal to scrap RNZ concert? No, um, I think we've got, we've got concerns about some of the aspects of their proposal. Um, that, you know, we're not getting involved in programming and operational uh, decisions, but there were a number of things that we could do and that we're looking at um, in order to mitigate some of the aspects of um, the decision made by Radio New Zealand uh, to uh, re have a look at its uh, concert FM uh, strategy uh, and also uh, the youth strategy as well. What aspects were concerning? I'm not going to go into that. I think I've got to go away and do some work uh, and uh, see what we can do about that. And uh, if we can do things, we will, and we'll announce that when we're ready. And that was the Broadcasting Minister, Chris Farfoy.